him out of the audience. I'm not kidding. He's <laughs> in the audience. What's this? <laughs> Please state your name for the folks at home. Scott Hanson. Oh, Scott Hanson. What'd you do for a living, Scott? I'm an actor. Oh, really? On any shows I would know? I was on a show called 30 Rock. Yes, I've seen you on! What are, you doing, what are you doing in the audience here? Why, why are you here? Uh, you, 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 you bored? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big fan, and I wanted to see you close up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all right. We're amongst friends, pal. Well, yeah, yeah. You've got a lot of makeup on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should see my penis. I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's nothing to do with makeup. I'm just telling you, you should see my penis. <laughs> You know, don't you wear makeup when you do your show? I do, yeah. Yeah, well, that's on NBC, that show, isn't it? It used to be. <laughs> well, the show's done now? Yeah, we're done. We, we yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But so you're no longer on NBC? No. Good for you. <laughs> so you're still in show business then? Yeah. <laughs> Knock it off. Knock it off. I'm just having a bit of schadenfreude. <laughs> CBS to... is doing very well. They're doing fine. Uh, I, actually, I enjoy many of their shows. Like? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd say more than like. I'd, I'd say love. You're obsessed with what? Lucy Liu. What show is she on? The one where, that she's in. The uh, <laughs> Ele Elementary. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you watch that show? I've not seen it. Oh, it's, neither have I. <laughs> but Lucy Liu's in it, so... Why are we not watching it? It's late at night, Scott. <laughs> hey, oh, why don't you just uh, come and live here? You're awesome. Oh, fantastic, I live in the barn. <laughs> I, I can set you up over there if you want. You might. Really? <laughs> come on over, he's saying come on over. Really? All right, yeah, let me go. All right, I'll just, can I be the back half? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Sponsored by Allegra. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. as if it were real and you really meant it. <laughs> Why this audience sounds like this? It's just a parody of a late night show audience. <laughs> Wait, Craig, that would mean this show is a parody of a late night show. <laughs> Mocking the very genre to which you belong. Correct? Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. It's gonna be a cussy one. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can feel, I can feel the ooh-la-las and the cranky dingoes all over the place. It is, of course, a great day for America, everybody. 
Yes, indeed. It was very, I wait, you know I wait for this day all, all year, Jeff. This is oh, the day. I, I, I wait for it because it's a big birthday uh, today. Aerosmith singer Stephen Tyler, the great Stephen, is 65 today. Wow. Stephen, yeah, I know. And Kira Knightley is also 28. Hang on, I'll get it. Uh, Keira Knightley and Stephen Tyler, very different, of course. One's a beautiful woman whose sharp cheekbones haunt my sexy dreams, and the other one is Keira Knightley. There you are. Yeah, Happy yeah. birthday, Stephen. Uh, also, it is the birthday. Everyone's very excited around here, uh, and I know CBS are going crazy. There's a lot of events planned for this week because it is the birthday of American poet Robert Frost. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of CBS's prime time Robert Frost week. <laughs> Hawaii Five-O, Robert Frost. <laughs> NCI, don't know any of his poems. Uh, you know Robert Frost's poems. What are Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch me touch myself below. I don't think that's the last line. Yeah. But up until that, I, I I'd lived a bit. You shouldn't do that with poetry. <laughs> You got a picture of Robert Frost? There he is, look at that. Yeah, looks like a badass. That's, that's, that's a poet right there. He probably just got back from chopping up a fresh batch of similes. <laughs> Robert Frost got his own stamp in 1974. You, can I see it? Yeah, there you are, look. 10 cents, that's a bargain. <laughs> it usually costs me twice that to lick an elderly person. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Good night, smart people. <laughs> Robert Frost won four Pulitzer Prizes in his lifetime. Four! That's amazing! If I had won four Pulitzers or even one, I'd wear them around my neck. I'd be like Michael Phelps in the club. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, ah, 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 ah. four Pulitzers, be at you. Uh, probably Robert Frost is a little more dignified than that, yeah, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. He had a fascinating life, uh, Robert Frost. In his early years, he was very young, and uh, as I, time went on, he got a little older. <laughs> well. I didn't really research this very much. Anyway, uh, here's a thing that Robert Frost said, uh, which I think uh, he, said, uh, he said, a poem begins as a lump in the throat. Now look, maybe I don't understand the whole idea of metaphors and <laughs> allegory, but if your poem starts as a lump in the throat, you should see your doctor. <laughs> now, I have mixed feelings about poetry. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Done well, poetry is fantastic, but not many people are capable of doing poetry well. I think you should have some sort of official certification in order to perform or write poetry. We could call it a poetic license, if you will, and it... <laughs> Basically, I think that poetry is like sex. You know, it's brief, confusing, and best left to professionals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, it is... 90% 90, 90 of bad poetry, in my experience anyway, comes from two groups of people. Uh, depressed teenagers and people just out of rehab. These are the people <laughs> that feel compelled to write poetry. Now, depressed teenagers, they can't help it. There's no more Twilight movies anymore. They're, Bella, Jacob, who will choose? I don't know. I've got my shoes. And they, uh, uh, <laughs> And then the people who are newly sober, and I speak from experience here, you, you have this overriding feeling that poetry is a way to express yourself. Don't. <laughs> no, but no, I've been, listen, I'm not, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, don't, just wait till the fog clears a little bit, all right? What you don't understand about me? No. <laughs> the reason I... Shut up. <laughs> Give it some time. I've actually been to a poetry slam. I went to the... Uh, uh, it was in Delray Beach in Florida. It was a great little cafe there. I can't remember the name of it. It was great, though. Uh, it was a little coffee house in Delray Beach in Florida, and it was lesbian poetry night. <laughs> It was awesome. The place was filled with lesbians all competing against each other with the power of the tongue and the... <laughs> and listen, if you're me... If you're me... 
If you're me, you you know I, I enjoy that kind of thing. And it's especially, it's especially good for me because I am mistaken for KD Lang all the time. I'm like the Beatles when I go into a lesbian comedy slam. I'm like, they're like, Katie Lang's here. I'm like, mm, what's up? <laughs> anyway, the variety of the poetry at the lesbian comedy slam is basically it's the same theme over and over again. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. We're really not that interested in penis. I... <laughs> Some say that being a poet uh, is a dying profession these days. It's like being a video store clerk or a Blackberry salesman or a... <laughs> <laughs> or late night talk show host. But I... I don't think poetry is dying. I think poets just need to come up with a new work that challenges the convention, turns it on its ear. For example, why not write about a lady... A lady. A lady from Nantucket. Not a man from Nantucket. A lady from Nantucket. <laughs> Told you it was going to be a cussy one, didn't I? <laughs> and yet, there has been no cussing. I've talked only about poetry. It's almost as if I'm with you too! <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. of Robert Frost that is the CBS... Right, right? Yeah, Robert Frost. Oh, we've got crazy people. Have we got Robert Frost-themed expressions? <laughs> Jeff, do your Robert uh, throw it for the thing. I'm walking in the snow. There you are. <laughs> Scott, do you have a Robert Frost uh, impression you'd like to do? The road not taken. Yeah, there you are. Oh, good. How, how are things working out with you two in the stable? Everyone all right? It smells a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go near that stable, weirdly enough, it always smells like marijuana. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you cool? Are you cool with him being in the stable? Hell yeah. Man. Yeah, all right. Do you watch the 30 Rock? Oh, I love that. That's love a, that's that a great show. show. Tina Fey's that show. She's lovely. Oh, isn't it was she? a great uh, show. I did an American Treasure right there. Beautiful woman. Would be very funny. Very funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't leave you anywhere to go being nice about someone, does it? No. Who, who else is funny on that NBC? Um. The, the, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Crocky Dinga. Little guy. Yeah. Yeah. You see what he's doing? <laughs> you see what he's doing? Are you bored already? I'm trying to think of somebody. <laughs> There's that guy. Uh, you know who's great? Uh, Brian Williams. Yeah, he's he, no, he, that's a, that's, he, Well, not when he's reading serious news things, but when he's like on Saturday Live and stuff, he's fantastic. Very good. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he, you know, he's funny and he's charming. He's got nice hair. He's handsome. I kind of, I kind of have a thing for him. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah good, good. You like Brian, did, you, did Brian Williams ever go on 30 Rock? Oh, he, can't, he couldn't stay off it. He was always on. Really, he was on maybe three or four times. Did you find his presence irritating? <laughs> I really thought I would, but he turned out to be funnier than most of us. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, la, la. Brian Williams. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just saying what everyone, everyone yeah, over the, in the stable is thinking. Of course. Can you still do the horses, read the horse's mind in the Morgan Freeman voice? Yeah, I'd, I'd All, all right, do, do it again then. Well, I certainly love 30 Rock, but I could go for a rock of a different kind right now. <laughs> mm. Man. Where are you going? Yeah, yeah. Where are you going, lover boy? You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> All right, that's enough. It's tweets and emails time, that's and we've, right. we've got three minutes to do it now. So, what time is it, Jeffrey Pierce? It's tweet mail time. Time to take advice from a man who once authored poems under the pen name Automata Penis. <laughs> that's, that's true. It's true, man. Do you want to join in with the tweets and email jingle, too? Yeah. Just, we, just, we just sing a song. We just me, sing or, me or him? Uh, you. Okay, what do I do? Uh, just uh, sing tweets and emails. Ready? One, two, three. Tweets and emails. Tweets and emails. Tweets and emails. Jeff, Jeff, you do. Tweets and emails. Yeah, that's one of the better ones, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. This, uh, uh, this is from Hannah in Reading in Pennsylvania. You ever been beautiful there? Place, oh, beautiful place. Beautiful place. You ever been to Reading, Pennsylvania? Not yet. Uh, well, I'll save this then. Uh, <laughs> This is from uh, Roger in Bismarck, North Dakota. You ever been oh, there? Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. what a place. It's named after uh, Count von Bismarck. Count von Bismarck. That's yeah. right. Uh, and North Dakota named after the Dakota, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Count, uh, Count believe. Dakota. Uh, uh, Count Dakota? There were two counts. You ever yeah. been to North Dakota? Well, when I was seven. <laughs> All right, man, don't overdo it. Uh, <laughs> Dear Craig, Jeff, Pearson, and... Hey, wait, hang on a second. It also says, this is weird, how they knew, I have no idea. And... Yeah, look at that. And, and Scott, it's right wow. there. It's right. <laughs> uh, dear Craig and Jeff and Scott, uh, I'm, trouble get, I'm having trouble getting into the spring spirit since it's about 10 degrees outside. Any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I may quote the late, great Sam Kinison, Get a U-Haul. What's the coming to Boof! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ever see that bit? Sam Kinison. Man, he was funny. He was funny, Sam Kinison. If he was on NBC, he'd still be funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's how funny he was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, no, man. Sorry. All right, this is from uh, Lisetta and Caracas in Venezuela. You ever been to Venezuela? No, I've been to Caracas. You've been to Caracas, but you've never been to Venezuela. No, 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 no. You, you, ever, you ever been to Caracas? Not yours. <laughs> ah, I think some of this is going by me tonight. I don't really know. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Lizetta says, hello, Craig. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Scott. Uh, what's a good snack to eat while viewing your program? Oh, I recommend the one that's being advertised. <laughs> what? what are you talking about, Greg? You mean boner pills is the snack? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Boner pills is the snack of choice. Yeah. I'm inadvertently lapsing into Sean Connery. I'm not even doing what? It's because I started talking about boner pills, I just suddenly started talking like Sean Connery. Kind of turning me on a little bit. You ever met Sean Connery? I've not. Wasn't he on 30 Rock? No. That's why you got cancelled. Uh, <laughs> he hasn't been here. That means... <gasps> <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Ask me who my new friend is. Who's your new friend, Craig? I've got a new friend coming out right now. <laughs> hey, 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 wait, wait. Think it through. <laughs> she stars in How to Live with Your Parents for the Rest of Your Life, which premieres Wednesday, April the 3rd on ABC. Take a look at this. <laughs> Sarah Chalk, everybody, Sarah Chalk. Good. You look you look really good. Like really. Are you doing Pilates or something? Um no I'm not, but I, I have actually heard about this whole Pilates craze. I'm thinking of diving in, but I don't I'm do it, don't don't do it. Don't do it? No, no, because wh whatever you've got. Are you doing Pilates? <laughs> Clearly. Um What? Well, that's not bad. What I know that was that was genuine. Genuine. You know what it is. It's the interpretive dance. Yeah, that's right. I do a lot of that. Do, do, yeah. uh, do you know Scott? Uh, Hi, Scott. How are you? Ah, so good. <laughs> you guys were... Was that German there you did? Yeah, no, truly. Is it, like, are you, are you German? <laughs> You've been here a lot of times. I never noticed you being German. Ah, Craig. So, so if I talk like this, you suddenly feel more at home? Uh, 
If we could do the whole interview like that, I feel much better. Take me back to my roots, yeah? Du siehst ganz Fußbeut. Ich liebe deine Ich rache nur, ja? Auch dein Schlips. Dein Schlips? Ja. Deine blaue Schlips. Do you speak German or you just make... Achtung! Meine Mutter ist yeah. in Deutschland. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I was sent to German school actually every Monday and Thursday. Really? <laughs> to learn one of the romance languages. Ich liebe dich! Ja! Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think German is a very sexy language. I don't know how romantic I feel it is, but I, I, <laughs> but I think it's quite sexy. I think that's like... I just wear my lederhosen well, and nothing so, else. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, you can do that too. <laughs> Uh, this show looks very good, Sarah. We could plug it a little bit, you know, it's a late night show, you're meant to. Yeah, I, I could do that? Yeah, go on. I loved it. I had such, a, such the best time. Um, Brad Garrett. Right, great. So anyway, you and went to this... Uh, and the Brad Garrett, he's, what is he, like eight foot tall, that guy? He's eight foot tall. Yeah. And my son is two feet tall, or one, maybe one foot tall. And um, they fell madly in love. It was love at first sight. So you can imagine like Brad and Charlie like hugging. Charlie like wraps his arms around Brad's leg every time he sees him. <laughs> he, he, well, he probably thinks he's some sort of friendly giant. <laughs> Which, in fact, he is in many ways. I've, I've met Brad Garrett. He's very friendly and he's giant. So he's a friendly giant right there. That's, a, and that's like, what they are. So friendly and the most generous. On Charlie's birthday, this huge box shows up at our door. It's like a ride-on backhoe loader. And um, <laughs> we open it and Charlie's so excited. And he's like, you know, Daddy can put this together when he gets home. And I was like, I don't know. I got this. <laughs> I got this. And so I open up the box and there's like... Like nine separate packages of parts and you these can't, manuals. You, no, you can't put stuff together I, for babies. You can't. No, I'm not saying <laughs> you can't. No one can. No one can. No, no, no. It's for someone under the age of three. It, it's not just toys. It's anything like it's, cribs and strollers. And oh. it's like you, like they're designed by sadists. <laughs> these things. They really are. I mean, I suspect they come from a land that you know a little bit about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This one did. It had so many. Uh, it's tiny... like you. It's like can't you just make it and then give it to me? That is not. Is not how it works. C capitalism. You make. Rock it. I buy it. That's how it works. Right? It's not like I buy the parts and then make it. I got a man. Man, give me the stuff. Give me the back of it. You gotta jump on that. Rock it. Yeah. Yeah. So I had, like basically lost parts into the body of the backhoe loader and then which Jamie then had to completely disassemble the whole thing the bucket was put on upside down we had to order more parts off the internet because there's some parts that like once you hammer them on that's it you can't yeah you take can't them get off. them undone no I've been there a hundred <laughs> times I think that I think that's part of the plan that you waste a little bit and then you have to buy more to buy more yeah it's or just like a new backhoe loader because now you have a crying three-year-old who has a like a back who's trauma upside down traumatized, traumatized traumatized for life hates you yeah, loves Brad. Yeah, loves Friendly Brad, giant. sure, yeah, because Brad just turns up when it's all done and yeah. goes, how you doing, little fellow? <laughs> so the, what's the show about then? It's about you have got uh, sexy parents from the olden days? I, it's exactly, that was the... That's it, right? Line. Yeah. Me with sexy parents from the olden days. Um, I play Claudia Lano. It's actually her true story of showing up on her parents' doorstep and saying... I know Claudia Lano. You know Cla yeah. She's kind of the best. She's crazy. She's the best. She's really lovely, but yeah. I know her. She's nuts. And yeah, she's pretty awesome. Is this her show? It's her show. It'll it's be smart. good. It'll be no, really it's good. Like, she's, she's like, whoa. She's the funniest. She's literally the funniest human. Yeah, it's like funny stuff there. Comes funny down her arms, goes in her fingers, doodly doo. It's on the arms. page. Yeah. Comes out of the mouth. That's being how like you make that's how you make parents. money in this town. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you've, you've probably got a lot of money, haven't you? No, I'm very, t I'm very bad with money. No, come on. I every time I, I bought you most of it. I spent on the unitard I bought you. That was the same color as your tie. Remember my, your unitard from your modern dance, the full piece spandex onesie. Oh yeah. I spend, I just spend it on. That things. was all your money, and that that was, that was I that's got to be like a fifteen dollar item we're talking about there. That's maybe all that's ever made. Are you very, co are you very cautious with money? No. <laughs> That's a problem. Really? No, I'm thinking of investing in a horse that people have to stand inside and nod for me. Can I give you some advice? Because I've got a little... No, wait. I've, I, let me I give you some advice because I have a little bit of experience here. Rent. <laughs> so you don't own that one? Oh, I do now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know the real one. Once you, once you poop in it, you own it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs>
Hey, you started! You started! It's not my fault. It's genetic. Uh, oh, Mine is Tanta Chrissy. She was a snorter. It's not my fault. It really is genetic. Wait, 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 mean it's not your fault. I'm not, I didn't accuse you of snorting like... You kind of did. Was, you snorted! Well, was a little bit I was excitedly sure. observing your snort. Okay. I wasn't... I wasn't judging you for snorting. Far from it. I've snorted myself on the odd occasion. <laughs> Occasion. Yeah, occasionally, yeah, you know, you give it a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I freaked myself out. There I did snort. Wow, I like How... your shoes. Oh, thanks. Whoa, that's a. Uh, there's somebody that speaks German right there. I can only wear shoes that like have a top. I can't wear like the ones that girls wear with the pretty toes. toe cleavage. Uh, no, 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 with the toes showing. Why not? Because I'm half toe. You got long toes. Finger toes. Can you peel a banana with your toes? <laughs> Do that as an experiment before the next time I see you, but I can write with my feet. You really can? Yeah. See, I find that very attractive. It's pretty, it's really sexy. Like, depending on what I write. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, can you write German with your feet? Ach du lieber Gott! I snorted! Another, another sweet nothings like that. <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back with Sarah Joker. Welcome back, we're talking about the dress. It's Robert Frost night. So, uh, are you a fan of Robert Frost? Oh, yeah, poetry, yes. Really? Do you find poetry an aphrodisiac? Some people do. I, I do. I mean, if I'm being perfectly honest, like, singing musicals to me might work better. Oh, you're <laughs> such a fool! <laughs> On my own. No, I can't sing it. I, someone else has to sing it to me. Well, but uh, don't you but. find that I always feel sorry for people in musicals that are being sung at, particularly uh, like it's in movies <laughs> and they're going, I'm singing to you, Abba, and the person has to go. <laughs> I, I don't. Give me another couple of verses. Yeah, I, I had to sing to, uh, you know the actress Olivia Williams? Yeah. I had to sing to her in a musical once. And? Uh, yeah, it was all right, actually. There was a thing about it. <laughs> yeah, it worked out fine. How did it feel to be singing to her? Did it oh, feel... are we still talking about the singing? Yeah, it was, that was fine, too. <laughs> she snorted. That's what we were after. It worked. Yeah, yeah, Success. no, I, it was, uh, yeah. So I poetry, do, eh? I used to do musicals, um, musical theater before. I mean, that's why I wanted to get into acting. I wanted to be Eponine Les Mis, but then I was kicked out of the choir in grade five. Why? Because I'm completely toned down. Uh, <laughs> that's going to work against you unless you're Russell Crowe. Then you can do what you like. Uh, oh, shut up. The Cotillard is nodding. What? The Cotillard is nodding. Oh, really? Yeah? Yeah. Secretariat? <laughs> what about you, Scott? Did you see Les Mis, Scott? Yes, I did. Uh, did you enjoy it? I really did, yeah. Every time Anne Hathaway came on, on screen, I would start crying. Every time. <laughs> see, that's, that's... There you are, then. That's, that's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah, every time Anne Hathaway comes on, you start crying. Isn't she the one that no. ratted out her boyfriend to the feds? Yes. <laughs> Secretariat says yes, so yes. Yeah, I don't know if I'm okay with that. <laughs> I mean, the guy clearly was a criminal and had to go to jail, but hey, come on, you know. No, I, she did the right thing. Yeah, she did, absolutely. She did the right CBS thing. CBS <laughs> The more you know. Like, if you're, uh, if you're fiancé, you guys yes. married yet? You're fianced. Oh, you're still fianced? Yes. All right. We're good. Uh, I need a little more poetry read to me. Oh, uh, what's that? That's like... I know, I know a joke about that. Do you want to hear my joke I know about that? Anyway, like really? That, yeah. Okay, it's a very old joke. People already know this, I'm sure. So a guy goes to the doctor, and he says, Doctor, every time I make love to my wife, her toes go like that. And the doctor says, get her to take her tights off. <laughs> This is an old joke. I didn't know that one. You don't know that joke? I heard that one. Is that? Is this a? I didn't know that one. Yeah, yeah. It's just a very, very old joke. So that's what I've been doing wrong. Wait, wait. So your toes go like? Because I, I mean, what you go down there, they'd be like, <laughs> like airplanes would be landing. They'd be like, oh, there you go. There's the signal. <laughs> I may or may not have showed Craig my toes on the commercial. I've seen them. 
You've got Nosferatu feet. They're about the length of my fingers. Yeah, they're, they're, really, they're really long. I mean, is that a speciality kind of website thing? Like, is there a website? Ladieswithlongtoes.com. Well, you know what? Since I haven't been good with my money, that's a great new... There you go. For me. I'm here to help. Uh, do you I want, appreciate um, it. Do you want to throw some Frisbees at those guys? Yeah, I would, actually. I was, we're out a, of time. I was on a... Uh, ultimate frisbee football team in college so so you're pretty good no i just had to be on the team because i had a crush on someone on the okay team. then there you go all right you ready come on Ed. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks for covering me with a the clap there. <laughs> my next guest, who's, ask me who my next new friend is. Who's your next new friend, He's Craig? He's a best-selling author. His latest book, Hit Me, is in stores now. Please welcome Lawrence Block, everybody. Lawrence Block. <laughs> Lawrence Block, if I may call you that, or Larry, as I call you, when I'm not on television, which is something we do sometimes, let's be honest. That's right. That's sometimes right. we go to quiet places and hold each other. <laughs> In a tasteful way. Yes, well, you're an author. It's not like That's it's right. cheap. That's right. <laughs> I started this last night. I'm about ten pages in. It's the new Keller, uh, the new Keller book. Why, why is that funny to you? What, uh, why, is it, why would they love it? Know. Am I meant to say that I've finished it already? I suppose that's what they. I want. finished it last night, Larry, and I got it. <laughs> I'm about ten pages in. It's great. It's very. Uh, it's the return to form for Keller. It is. Who's your uh, stamp collecting hitman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you collect stamps yourself? Do you perform philately? <laughs> Can you say that on TV? Can we say philately? It's stamp collecting. I'm not talking about Tootsie Fruits. I'm talking about philately. <laughs> well, why on the subject do you perform Tootsie Fruits? <laughs> can, we say, can we say that? Oh, I can? I didn't know that. Oh, I can't. I can't. Oh, uh, no, I can't say that. You so, can't say that. No. Uh, so, you, so it's stamp collecting it is, then. I'm afraid that's the way it's going to be. Okay. Do you know, do you, are you know about stamps? Clearly do. you do. There's a I big do. stamp bit I at do. the beginning. I do. I was thought that it was a bit bold at the start of the book. It's a book about a man who kills people for money. Right. right? And what he's like in the story of his, li his life at this point. But you do a page and a half on a stamp. Yes. You know, so people in the bookstore are like, yeah, stamps? Come on, when does he kill somebody? And if they don't get past the first page and a half, you I got a Larry. <laughs> yeah. And an interesting thing is that a lot of the reviews and a lot of the reader comments have said, you know, I'm not really at all interested in stamps, but I read this and I found I wound up being interested. Well, that's and, true. I, that is true. The publisher was going to take out an ad that said, this book is not as boring as you think. <laughs> 
Well, you, it's not possible for you to write anything boring. I, you wrote a fantastic book about going for a walk once, I read. It was fantastic. Yeah. And, and I'm so proud you're here on Robert Frost night as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's fantastic. Listen, I heard they're doing uh, one uh, that uh, Liam Neeson is playing, uh, Matt Scudder. Yes. That's sensational. It is Matt Scudder is a character that Larry wrote. He's an alcoholic detective in New York City. It's a fantastic series of books. What's the book? What The, what? the book is A Walk Among the Tombstones. That's one of the best ones. Yes, I think. And Liam Neeson's playing? Him? He is. What would that sound like, Jeff? Quickly, there's no time. Lick this stamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I tell you, that's fantastic, though, because when they made, uh, what was it, A Million Ways to... Uh, eight Million Ways to eight Die. Eight Million Ways to Die, which was another Scudder, and uh, Jeff Bridges, was it Jeff Bridges? Yes. Who's a great actor. Yes, he but was. But they moved the, the story to L.A. and ruined it. They did an awful lot wrong with it. This yeah. is being shot right now in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Oh, great. And uh, Scott Frank is the writer and director oh, on this it. This is great It's news. really terrific. Yeah. That, when did, have they started making it? They have. I was there for one day of shooting, and... Um, They're probably more than one day, though, right? It'll oh, take a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's uh, a, something like a 10-week shooting schedule. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. well, congratulations. You know what that means, though? Money. <laughs> Money I'm for hoping. you. I'm hoping. You can buy yourself a lot of damn stamps with what's coming your way. <laughs> Mail letters all over the world. You can mail... But you're actually, you're quite busy on the Tweety now. You're, you're very kind of... Techno. Yes, yes, I do a fair amount of that. <laughs> oh. Techno? Are you techno? Very like, techno. Like, when you go to the club, Larry, are you like... Ah, ah. <laughs> no, but you're on... What's your Tweety handle again? I, uh, uh, L. At Blog. Lawrence Block. At Lawrence <laughs> Block. Yeah, that's it. It's I follow you on the Twitter. That's how I know. Yeah. Well, I don't clearly know, but I... I <laughs> but I do follow you on Twitter. Yeah, that's uh, nice. How many uh, do you do? A you do a lot of it. You're always tweeting stuff. I do a certain amount, and I do a certain amount of Facebook. But I got a thing just uh, just yesterday from a fan who told me what Keller's uh, email address had to be. He said it should be Keller at hitmail dot com. Uh -huh. <laughs> <coughs> Is that possible? Can you do that? Well, probably not, unless you started a domain with Hitmail, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah. yeah I stick to the book writing. You're good I at think that. I'm yeah. <laughs> safer. Stick to the book writing. Safer, and I'm also, what? I'm very excited about the, uh, about Liam Neeson as Scudder. I think that's a yeah. magnificent piece of casting. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Were you, uh, I mean, did you have anything to do with that? Do you suggest people? Do you, no. Did you have anyone in mind? No, when but you I, wrote? I, he, he was way at the top of my list for a sure. long time now. Yeah. I mean, he's excellent. Do you have someone in mind when you write characters? Do you think about no. a movie star or a person you know? Mm -mm. So you don't know anyone that collects stamps and kills people? I know some people who collect stamps. And I know some people we're not too sure about. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about the same people, really, yeah. 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 I always thought that Keller the Hitman was a little bit like you. I thought it was autobiographical because you kill people all the time in your books. Like you, no, you, you know you do. I mean, like you, you set somebody up and you give them a little life and you talk about them and then you brutally murder them. You know, I take exception to that. I don't. What? Uh, what? I, I don't. I don't kill any of them. Other characters kill them. All right. So you send people to kill them then. I just. Put them in motion. They have free will. They do not have free will. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, we're out of time. Uh, not us. <laughs> not, not us. I hope you know, but uh, <laughs> unless you've set something in motion, that I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> Lawrence Block, everybody. We were right back. Thanks for joining us tonight on a very special Robert Frost edition of the <laughs> Late Late Show. If you were wondering what the Christmas card's going to look like this year, here it is. 